This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Growing up, a lot of us dreamed of having comic book superpowers. In the future, these dreams could come true. A pretty popular topic on this show, and many other speculations in futurism and science fiction, is transhumanism and options like heightened intelligence or super strength and speed. We've touched on such notions before, but I thought today we'd spread our wings out a bit and look at some of the less down to earth superpowers, in our general discussion of clock tech, technology so advanced they are indistinguishable from magic. At the same time, while many might seem like the realm of the fantastic, possible only through entirely new science at odds with our current understanding, many probably can be approximated with technologies not that far off. In many ways, they are in the realm of the future and fantastic only because we don't have them now, and many technologies we already possess would have been magical and fantastic to our ancestors. Superpowers are hardly limited to comic books, and are at least as old as mythology. Many a comic book hero is drawn in whole or part from mythology. Flight is an obvious example, but what is mundane to us now would be extraordinary to our forebears, and I don't doubt what is extraordinary to us will prove to be mundane in the future too. We actually do sell jetpacks these days, and though expensive, that's most the economy of scale, much of the ability to go scuba diving and visit the world beneath the waves is still a wonder, but one experienced by millions each year. Olympian deities living atop mountains or up in the sky and able to call down lightning or possessing the superhuman speed or strength of ten men are all entirely plausible options for us in the future. Arcane knowledge or healing powers possessed, or allegedly possessed, by wizards are now commonplace, though seals able to predict the weather remain elusive, at least here in my home in Ohio where weather forecasts for even the next day are often unreliable. But that might be a good place to start. The ability to predict the future, precognition, is one we have too many examples of to count in comic books with Dr. Manhattan of the Watchmen series perhaps being the best known. Other fictional examples are also too numerous to count, from the Jedi and Sith of Star Wars to classic science fiction such as the Navigators of Frank Herbert's Dune or Harry Seldon in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. While that last one is an example of using raw science and math of psychohistory, rather than magic, to foresee the future, as we saw in our episode on psychohistory, even the most powerful computer we can imagine could not accurately predict the future of human events. The butterfly effect and quantum mechanics simply make long-range prediction impossible in many areas, but it is worth remembering humans do have precognition, albeit in most contexts only for maybe a second. Indeed between all the travel time of information to reach you, get sensed, get sent to the brain, processed, decided on, reacted to, and so on, We don't really live in the present, but have a sort of hazy blur of past and future we exist in which only seems mundane rather than awesome because it is the textbook example of the mundane, something we experience constantly and have our whole life. If you want to catch a ball, you have to anticipate where it will be when your hand gets there while you are looking at a present location of that ball where it isn't anymore when you see it. Considerably more time elapses for the signals to move from your eyeballs to your brain than from the photons leaving that ball and reaching your retinas. It is not the same as what passes for you to hear an object either, or feel the wind of its passage, nor is the transmission time to your various muscles or their own contraction time even vaguely uniform. We often talk about how brains are powerful supercomputers, and that is an awful lot of what your brain is doing, gathering data, ordering it in a proper sequence, making predictions, and assembling best guess situation reports for your conscious mind. When we look at examples like Spider-Man or the Jedi with their danger senses warning them of something about to happen, that's something we already have to a limited degree, 
and advancements in mind augmentation could very easily increase the accuracy and range of those predictions. It's quite probably the preferred path for mind augmentation in the future. One legitimate concern about massively increasing intelligence, should it be possible, is that it might so alter the person that they're not even human in their psychology anymore, let alone the same person, arguably making such enhancements a type of suicide, or at least metamorphosis. Many might find that undesirable no matter what the gain. If they're being done simply to increase the accuracy of what your conscious mind is perceiving, core personality might be maintained. And this isn't simply stuff like catching or throwing a ball better, you might glance up at the night sky and know what time it is and exactly where you are simply by having subconsciously calculated all the star positions and angles, or the day sky and know it will rain in 27 minutes, or be able to drive through a downtown city at Formula One race car speeds or dodge bullets because you and everyone else simply know where everything is going with that same subconscious certainty you have when reaching out to clasp and shake someone's hand. In the same way that precognition is a valuable ability, so is effective omniscience, and we already have gotten used to being able to get data or answers from our networks very quickly, like navigating to a destination using a GPS. This, like precognition, is also not new. Human speech lets us lightly network to each other when nearby to share information others have. The invention of writing let us access that human network when the node with the information might be far away or even centuries dead. Phones and the modern internet further extend that, but a more direct linkage than speech or writing might allow you to simply wonder what time it is and know, because you have an internal clock or subconsciously pinged an atomic clock somewhere. Ditto weather forecasts, ditto free seats at the local restaurants, traffic jams, or how many leaves are on that tree you just walked by. But taking this a bit farther, right now if you want to know what's in your food, you can look at the ingredients list and google them up, something our ancestors couldn't do, and saves us a lot of pointless memorization, but that still requires a lot of active effort and in the future you might find yourself subconsciously aware of what all the ingredients and health effects are of a piece of food simply by regarding it, in the same way you don't really have to think to recognize a pen from a pencil or a cupcake from a banana, you just know. But of course you don't, some huge search was conducted in your brain to determine what that object was and call up relevant attributes and concerns. Super senses, possessed by characters like Superman or Wolverine, are actually the easy part, even stuff like x-ray vision, but integrating that into someone's head is harder. It's not just passing the info in a way the brain can process, but also in guessing its implications. We see someone with heightened vision or hearing being able to detect the bad guys nearby, We don't see them cooking without measuring cups because their senses and processing are so acute they can tilt a jug of milk with a casual hand wave and pour out exactly 100 milliliters of milk, or 93.2, because they want a slightly smaller serving exactly appropriate to their appetite and senses, or linkage to external sensors and reference are so ramped up that they can see a cupcake and just know, without needing to consciously think about it, exactly what the recipe was and how to alter it to their needs. Of course we don't picture superheroes doing stuff like that because it is mundane, and part of the point of a superpower is that it's an extraordinary thing because other people can't do that. I don't know what our cats or dogs think of our ability to summon light whenever and wherever we want it, or open doors or cans of food nor our ability to use our opposable thumb to manipulate or move objects at a whim, or change the color of our fur. To us, that is mundane, while to them it is extraordinary, assuming their minds can really encompass those actions in their entirety. Of course our furry friends often feature in superpowers too. A few months back in our Future Pets episode, We noted that technology might allow us to talk with them, or see through their eyes or replicate any of the special nature powers we see in folks like Aquaman or Druids or other nature-oriented characters, though as mentioned there, unless you're building in some ability to compel them to act, talking to animals doesn't guarantee results, any more than talking to a toddler 
as they don't have some personal language akin to a human one that includes deep abstraction of concepts. In general, even the smartest of our furry friends makes your average toddler look patient, attentive, and deep. What else is on the table? Of course we've got a lot of superheroes and villains who possess no special powers, Batman, Iron Man, Lex Luthor, and my personal favorite superhero, Doctor Doom, to name just a few, though they arguably possess the greatest superpowers, vast intelligence, and resources. We don't normally think of Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein as superheroes, but they were both capable of gravity manipulation, from a certain point of view, and we saw a lot of awesome options for what you could do with that or anti-gravity in our last Clark Tech episode. Topping out the Marvel comic villains we have Magneto, the aptly named Master of Magnetism, something we probably could give people, and of course his frenemy, Professor Xavier, who can read minds. Magneto is often shown to be so good with his powers he can do things like lock people in place or throw them by exerting force on the ion in their blood, and he could presumably do some mind reading by doing magnetic resonance imaging, indeed I'd not be surprised if he has, I've not read the comics since the 90s, and MRIs weren't as common then for someone to think of having him do that. It's one of those examples we often see with fictional technologies, and are examples in Clark Tech of unexpected and potent uses the writers didn't initially think of. But telepathy, such as Professor Xavier has, is a staple of even science fiction that often otherwise avoided the fantastic, like Isaac Asimov's foundational robot series. Also the minds in Ian Banks' cultural universe can trivially read human thoughts and memories, although it was considered highly rude and invasive to do so. Personally, I always found it irritating how many science fiction stories would throw in psychic powers like magic into settings that were focused on science, but this may be an example where it will turn out justified. As mentioned earlier, we are essentially a limited type of hive mind already, something we looked at in more detail in the Hive Minds episode, and we seem to be heading down that path a bit more with modern technology. Speech is slow and low bandwidth but is fundamentally a type of Wi-Fi network. That's the same as the early internet or texting was mostly just text, but has come to include image or audio and video clips. I would not be surprised if mind-machine interfaces get developed, and we start supplementing our normal language by casting images or memories at each other rather than describing them. We used to invite people over to see our photos after a trip, and before cameras just describe them and we now just post the album to our Facebook page. We've all been at a table with a friend who was describing something and just stopped and grabbed their phone to show us that person, place, or whichever instead, and should anyone invent contact lenses that can function as a TV, we'll have an outbreak of apps designed to let us easily relay or manage sent images. Taking that to the next level would be straight brain-to-brain transmission, Though brain might be a rather broad term at that point, as you might have chunks of your mind that were computers implanted into your skull, carried in your pocket, or just on a cloud. Going beyond even that might be simply sending entire thoughts and reasoned arguments to people, to the point of simply sharing with someone your knowledge of martial arts, like in the Matrix, or calculus so you can explain some bit of science to them and the general life conclusions you derived from it. Though that edges very close to brainwashing, or even worse, personality overriding, and I'd imagine there'd be just as much software for preventing unwanted intrusions and sharing as for sharing. It's not really the flashy mind power like bending a spoon, but arguably even more handy and certainly more realistic. Of course telekinesis is another example of a superpower we see in another X-Man, or woman, Jean Grey and with the Jedi of Star Wars, though we never see them get smashed into the floor by the counterforce of lifting heavy objects up. This is also another example where we need to point out that we already have it. I can move things with my mind, like I'm moving keys while typing this, and we need to keep trivial examples like that in mind when considering technological approaches to these superpowers. It's the same as we noted that mundane speech is a type of telepathy, Partially that's because it's the basis for how we can extend our abilities, 
but also to remind us of how progressive steps of development will tend to be shaped by our current methods and impact our approach to life. So there's a bunch of drones or force beams like miniature Star Trek tractor beams that you can control with hand gestures or direct mind-machine interface. I don't know if it really matters how my cup of coffee gets from my desk to my kitchen, refills itself with coffee, and returns to my desk, so long as it's not distracting me. When you think about it, having to think your coffee cup to levitate across the room is a lot less advantageous than shooting a command to a small drone that races over to grab the cup and bring it back full. As we mentioned in our look at Power Armor, you might see someone dressed up like Iron Man with all sort of gadgets and weapons on that suit, but you're probably more likely to see those gadgets be focused on defense and control, while some cadre of automatons does most of the real fighting. It's the same idea, people might tend to be so wired into their home that everything is responding to their conscious or even subconscious commands, and might tend to walk around outside with a swarm of drones doing the same. Miniaturize that enough and you wouldn't be able to even see them doing stuff, which makes a nice alternative if you never invent tractor beams or some magnetic or sonic equivalent, but it also raises the notion of utility fog and smart matter. These are very tiny machines that can rapidly form up into an object, or more complex machines themselves. These might just be microscopic cell size things you could barely see, or all the way down to the near atomic scale where quantum mechanics probably limits further miniaturization. The simple image of this are constructs like the T-1000 from Terminator, or probably more accurately the T-3000 version that Doctor Who turns the franchise's primary protagonist into as I got the impression the machine phase matter the T-3000 was made out of was basically a limited utility fog or fairly smart matter. You might walk around with normal looking clothes composed of something like that and just forms whatever you need. It could probably also do limited manufacturing or imitations, so you could conjure up an apple or glass of water by imitating the apple's appearance and texture and triggering your taste and smell senses or condensing water right out of the air for that glass of water. Alternatively, you might not wear it as clothes or walk around with it like some mist or fog that accompanies you, but simply be that fog yourself. While having an adamantium skeleton or power armor or being cyborged or genetically engineered for super strength sounds neat, being composed of a trillion little machines grants some huge advantages, and if the mind balks at that notion, do keep in mind That is literally true of you right now. You are composed of a ton of little machines already. I should note that they'd probably come in a ton of different types and sizes too, much as our cells and symbiotic bacteria and viruses do, rather than some universal tiny robot. Specialization is advantageous, and when you've got trillions of something it kind of makes sense to instead have thousands of different species and types, each numbering the billions too. Such an individual pretty much automatically has all the abilities we've discussed so far, and probably could corpse stomp your typical superhero, but they'd also have access to teleportation and telepresence. That latter, telepresence, which is projecting your awareness or person somewhere else, is also one of those technologies we have creeping quietly into mainstream use. Being able to look far away and remotely control things, even android bodies that temporarily look like you and grant you the same feeling of presence as if you were standing there, are probably not that far off. This is also an effective equivalent to teleportation, and one of the options we discussed in that episode. In the end, mimicking a superpower first has to focus on asking what that superpower is meant to achieve because while being able to throw balls of fire you've conjured with your mind sounds cooler, it's functionally no different than just having a tech-based solution like a wrist-mounted flamethrower. I feel that's a bit of an important point, because in that regard, all technology is basically superpowers, and we're getting more every year. Of course if we really want specific superpowers, there will always be virtual reality, and as noted in Virtual Worlds, that could be where most folks spend most of their time in the future anyway, and at certain levels of technology there's really nothing virtual about them anymore. 
all of these options might not be as cool as getting your superpowers from cosmic radiation or standing next to an atomic bomb testing site, but they do give you those superpowers for all practical purposes, whereas radiation mostly just gives you cancer, so I know which one I'd prefer. It's also important to realize that once folks have a superhero ability, then it becomes mundane. The Dick Tracy comic strip of the 1930s had the superhero making use of technological gizmos in much the same way we see Iron Man using technology in our generation. One prominent superhero tool he used was a two-ray radio mounted in his watch for communicating. If that sounds boringly familiar, it's because the smartwatch has now entered the mainstream. Back then, it was considered a superhero device. So as we develop our technologies, they will no doubt resemble the superhero abilities we currently consider fanciful. Future generations will shrug and say that those abilities aren't superhero abilities, while to us, they clearly are. A critical point today is that our real superpowers are our minds and our understanding of math and science that lets us forge new technologies and dream up new applications of them. If you'd like to learn more math and science, try out Brilliant. Their online courses and daily challenges let you enhance your knowledge of math and science with easy to learn interactive methods from the comfort of your own home and at your own pace. To make it even easier, Brilliant now lets you download any of their dozens of interactive courses through the mobile app, and you'll be able to solve fascinating problems in math, science, and computer science no matter where you are or how spotty your internet connection is. If you'd like to learn more science, math, and computer science, go to Brilliant.org slash Isaac Arthur and sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription, so you can solve all the daily challenges in the archives and access dozens of problem solving courses. Next week we'll be looking at ways to launch spaceships into orbit by beaming in energy to the spaceship, which would also be a handy approach for a personal jetpack. And the week after that will be the 4th of July, when everyone in the US lights up their grills, and we'll look at some options for artificial synthetic meats as well as some other tasty technologies that might lead to culinary options like mammoth steaks and dino burgers. For alerts when those and other episodes come out, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and you can join in the discussion on Superpowers in the comments below or at any of our forums on Facebook, Reddit, Patreon, or our website, IsaacArthur.net, all linked in the video description. Until next time, thanks for watching, and have a great week. Music